you know my drill. You know I like to show up late. Uh, I'm Clay Lifeboard. You're watching Pretenders to the Throne. Uh, Pretenders to being on time on their Twitch channel. Um, and we uh, we got some we got some old faces. We got some new faces tonight. I figure we might just go around and uh, uh, do our normal drill, kind of introduce everybody. Um, so I'll start from my. I'll, I'll go center square. I'll give you the Paul Lind one as it shows up on mine. I can't see what the what the main screen is doing, but uh, Rockshul, you want know, Rocky? You want to introduce yourself? Hi, um, I play uh, Hydra, the ship's cook and empath. Hi, I'm James. Uh, I play Father Marcus Publianus. He is the confessor aboard the ship and seems to carry a larger secret with him. And a twinkle in his eye. Uh, <laughs> and then we've got a we got our new friend here. We got Scott Colquitt. Scott. Hey, I'm Scott, and I'm joining. It's my first time playing, and my character's name is Barkley Yenev Ekel. But he likes to go by Dash. He's kind of cage background. Door Dash. Love it. So, what we normally do at this time is. Uh, in the past, I've always given the basic premise. I feel like if you're watching now, you've probably seen one of the other ones, but this is, I'll just give the briefest one. I'll try to keep it down this time. Uh, we're kind of a sci fantasy setting, uh, uh, um, a sword and sword and sci, sword and lasers. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. It's, uh, you know, this is the, uh, the pretense of the phone is like about a futuristic, uh, 40,000 year future, like, you know, advanced industrial empire you know originally from earth and where scouts survey scouts uh your team here your pcs uh discovered a fringe planet in their normal survey of the of the outer realms of space um and uh found a habit and not only a habitable world but an inhabited one with humans there are no aliens in this setting that anybody's aware of at this point but you found other humans living at a medieval level and you guys are like way advanced. Uh, so orders came on from high to, to figure out what's up. Who are these? What, how did this happen? Is this a, uh, a, a parallel evolution or could this be a lost colony of earth from the original Exodus from earth all so many years ago uh, that maybe kind of devolved in being cut off from the Imperium and kind of, you know, had a separate, you know, blip. Uh, but you guys followed a signal from what you think is one of your own colony ships. So it probably is uh, that or somebody's purposely tricking you. Ooh. Um, but yeah, there's a big giant colony ship uh, called the Selene that is the size of a mountain. And it's like over, it's several miles tall and it's like, has like a million, it had one point had like a nearly a million colonists on it. Uh, now it is embedded in the earth, or maybe it's just a mountain that happens to, you know, look like it because there are disguised look like mountains. Um, but you, uh, in your, it took a lot of danger to get there, and you finally just uh, after a big uh, fight, you're entering the docking bay of one of the docking bays of this thing. Uh, I probably goofed over that uh, recap. Um, you'll pardon my everything. I feel like I've come down with something pretty terrible tonight, uh, but uh, I'll try not to sound gross. Um, who wants to do a recap of the last episode for us? Ooh. Mm. Can I nominate somebody? James, are you doing it? See what you're uh, I'll try as best I can, but uh, <laughs> feel free to jump in if uh, somebody yeah, can if anyone something. jump in. Yeah. yeah, I like to hear what you guys remember because it helps you figure out what's important to you guys. Okay, well, our last session began with us waking up after dying. <laughs> we have a uh, a clone that our character for our characters in this campaign. Mm -hmm. So we're still playing the same character during our funnel, but it's one our of those the funnel. Yes, so <laughs> our our very long funnel, but we we wake up within our tubes aboard a ship that I believe our surveyor captain or was he was he higher up 
Sayat. Oh, uh, he was your overlord. He wasn't a mil. He wasn't of a uh, military rank. He was. Uh, he was on behalf of the religious organization, uh, the the uh, Hierophants. So he was their representative. He so he just happens to know how to fly a ship in case of emergencies. Right. He's well, he the sh- leader. Yeah. Well, he shot us. Shot at us while we were trying to cross the bridge to get to this mountain, thinking that it seemed like that we betrayed him. For what reasons we don't really know. We have ideas, and that's about it. Yeah, you never really got to question him, did you? Yeah, and during the flight, we all wake up. One of our other players plays a character named Lucia. Was kept knocked out for the whole. Uh, <laughs> was knocked out the entire time, so we had to find a way to get Lucia out of those circumstances. And I guess a. Uh, during the time, we kind of explored the ship a little bit on our own while it was getting pulled down by this creature that also was <laughs> a, by a lo- or a kind of this tentacle-like creature that was at the bridge. We kind were, of like a hydra. Yeah, a hydra almost that was trying to fight and drag down the ship after causing so much noise, destroying this bridge we were on. With the locals that you met, you met some monks, local mo- monks whose job was to protect the holy mountain, right? And they yeah. called it a void beast. And they seem to have foretold your coming. Mm-hmm. They had a prophecy that you would arrive. They actually, part of their job was to await the arrival of people from the stars. Um, unfortunately, I think you lost them all, didn't you? On the bridge, on the bridge of Casa Doom. <laughs> yeah. They all, down? they all went down, right? Uh. We didn't see that we know them. of. Two of them survived. We saw two die. Yeah. What do you remember what happened to the two that survived? Do you remember where they got to? They ran off. That's about as much as I remember. What do you think, Rocky? Uh, I think um, you we, were near we, them. You were near them, but we didn't see, you know, and we were dealing with all this other stuff. So they were kind of like, as of last episode, they're out of the picture. Um, mm. They are, no, current whereabouts are unknown. Yeah. Just yeah. add that that the uh, that the the hydra creature, you know, when he dis- when Clay describes it, it, always reminds me of the the um, piranha plants or the mega smilex from uh, Mario. That's actually a good. That's the way I kind of see it. Too, like, the type of horrors, but yeah, totally. Well, because it doesn't have eyes and stuff. Very similar, yeah. Mm-hmm. And there's yeah. fangs and stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, we uh, I. Uh, I dealt with the captain or the overseer and Hydra, you know, feels we had evidence of mind control before. So, and since he was be- behaving in a way that did, that didn't sound like uh, his normal self, you know, Hydra believes that he was also mind controlled and tried to help him break that, but unsuccessfully. So pulled the jet seat on him, you know, before he mm-hmm. destroyed the other ship, trying to shoot it down. While we're, you know, so that everybody died, and um, then we all worked together to uh, save Lucia's unconscious form, and you know, and uh, and and uh, and 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 the father uh, took a, a, a heavy toll with that with that burning luck to, to make it. Yeah, burned seven luck to save Lucia. That was <laughs> a noble, a noble thing that you did there. But thanks to uh, thanks to a watcher, we uh, had we all had a reroll that that definitely we wouldn't have all made it through that episode um, yes. successfully if we didn't have those rerolls. I agree. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, undeniably right. Um, let me see uh, something out. Uh, yeah, yeah. So as we uh, left it, this this other kind of so this ship that rescue you that kind of came out of nowhere that's not one of your ships Mm -hmm. i want to reiterate that it's actually now you noticed so one of the big things that happened on this world was your your away team or your survey team was ambushed by uh people that seem to know that you were on their way not just like people that foretelled you're coming but people that seem to literally know you're going to show up and they had modern ish weapons but what's weird about their weapons were they are not uh, archaic like the medieval age weapons of this society. 
but they are also not as advanced as your current ones. They are somewhere, they're still like laser weapons. So they're advanced human weapons, but even beyond what the original colonists would have had when they got there 40,000 years ago, they wouldn't have had like laser weapons yet. It's somewhere after the colony would have been lost, but before you guys. Mm -hmm. As of yet, you have no, you are not told that there was another uh, survey expedition sent out previous to yours years ago. You, I mean, that, that found this place. You've never been told that, but that seems to be on the suspicion line. A little bit. Um, yeah. So this ship, much like those weapons, this ship also kind of looks. It's not the same size as a lander boat. It's like a little bit smaller. It's a little bit more s- svelte and smaller than uh, the, the the you know. The, so obviously you have a just to kind of give you the lay of the land. You have there your your master scout ship is still in space. It exists. Yeah. It's just that it can't land. It's too big to land. It's like a science vessel that's not you know streamlined for landing so it has these launches these ships boats it would send down of which there are two and only one went down you're you were on the one that's the one that just got destroyed the ship that rescued you is like a much older ranky dank vessel that's kind of in the same classification size as a ship's boat, but maybe a little bit smaller, possibly because of a different model, possibly because it's been more rigged for rigged for Baja, as you'd say, uh, you know, a bit of a fighter. But uh, that's it, also seems to fall into that zone of technology that is uh questionable. Um, you didn't get a good chance to look at any markings on it, but you can tell it's got a bunch of faded markings on the side of it. Um, it also is, unlike your ship, does not have a, a cloaking disguise on it that can make it look like other things, which it may have, like, you know, if they ever had one, it may have died a long time ago. It's just this out in the open. Um, yeah, I mean, it has been kind of painted to try to draw attention away from it. Like, it's a little kind of camoed. I suppose, but like it's basically like, hey, I'm a I'm a ship, I'm flying, whatever. Um, <laughs> so we have a decision to make before we start. Um, so this, uh, so you know, the best laid plans of mice and men. I thought the funnel would be shorter. There is a very natural point at which it makes sense to have you level. Um, we are. I don't I can't guarantee when that point's coming up. So I had a thought as to how to do this so you don't have to sacrifice uh we can basically do one of two things. Is you will have the option to shift uh so right now you guys are all in line to be uh you know seraph away agents, you know, agents mm-hmm. of yeah of the scout service, but you will have the ability at a certain point to possibly adopt classes, more traditional classes, uh, as you are in, integrated into the potentially into the grade of the society. Or maybe maybe you'll go home. Who knows? You know, it's not it's not preordained. But assuming that you're probably going to be stuck here for a while, the basis of the campaign, though not necessarily true, uh, you would have the ability to potentially pivot towards some uh, pre-existing DCC style classes. That said, um, the way I have two things we can do. So that way you don't have to wait it out and to see when that point comes. One would be to just raise generically some of the stuff to get you like more hit points, better ability score, better abilities to use towards your fighting and your special powers. Um or and then this leave the rest blank and just using using the seraph hit die for that one, which is a d8. And then you know, you could you know re-roll that hit die later on if you decide like your second your first level is actually gonna be like a warrior later on. Mm-hmm. Or we could do the thing which I've been thinking of, which is since I am so so I've designed the seraph class to be basically to be very open-ended to be very malleable where it's because it's meant to be people that are embedded. So they, they kind of morph themselves a little bit to meet the situation. Therefore, instead of having normal abilities besides the basic ones, like the ones like, you know, your hit dice and some of those other things, like your basic, you know, 
uh, some of the basic scores. Um, just the basically just the bonus increases that you would have as a seraph. Any other special ability that comes about from being a certain class would be based on a benison buy. Uh, mm-hmm. In other words, um, using uh, my beloved, my much beloved benison system that I, you know, I love so much from uh, Linkmar, where you will have, uh, you can not even choose to buy it yet. You can have some, you'll have some points that you can spend on a benison or two. And we can just hold that until give you everything else now. Hold back on those benisons until it makes sense. So you see what your options are, which could be, you know, this session to go, oh, Jesus, this is not my court out. Um, it could be this session, it could be next session, but at least now you're not, you wouldn't be waiting for like things that'll help you survive. Uh, what do you guys think about that? And then if you do change your mind and you want to pivot hardcore into a traditional GCC class, I would be fine letting you re roll that hit die if it's a higher hit die. Um, I I was, you know, previously I was all for let's hurry up it so we can you know finish this, the funnel and level up. But knowing that that there's you know a lot of options, you know, not counting the venisons and stuff, um, that my vote is to just wait. I mean, we it, we made it this far, and you know, if I and I and there's a bunch of times where I I, I at least two times I definitely could have died. You know, True. um, it's so, depending on so. what you do now, things can get pretty hairy. I don't know because it really just depends on what y'all do. Um, I will say this may, I mean, maybe it makes sense that you know, we would, I mean, I have this is the most we've ever play tested this, so maybe it makes sense that you guys are all seraph agents by class and that all the differentiation and local flavor is done through benisons because literally every ability you could ever want from another class you'll have enough points to get it through benison buys i have you know I, you know in my in my version of benisons i basically turned every class ability into a benison so you can kind of like piecemeal it out and you'll have enough points to get enough to fulfill a first level character of pretty much any class Hands, with the exception of potentially <laughs> having not as many spells as a wizard. Actually, no, I don't know. First level Hands wizard, luck. you might have enough. Hands mm-hmm. luck. Um, two, uh, two, uh, two-handed fighting and uh, and deeds. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Luck. Luck. Well, you will have, a, a, but you are, you know, you have also. You know, you, you the other thing is the trade off. If if there's like one thing is off, you still get you go up in your uh, your natural ability department. So you have your, you know, you offset. You know, like maybe you don't get one of those warrior things, but you would have an increase that you would always have to your psychic power. So you definitely would offset that. Um, mm-hmm. Also, the thing we could do is if you want to do that just to make sure you survive now, you could pivot. You could pivot at level two, you know, almost as if it were a, uh, you know, AD and D style, um, which I'm gonna call it, uh, not multi class, but um, what was the other term? Why am I blanking? Not multi class, but when you dual class, yeah, remember the old dual class mm-hmm. rules, AD and D, where you would uh, just change professions. We said that before, like you know, living the same thing with multi class, like you go up one, and that if you want, you can go up in the other one next time. You know, yeah, well, this one would be a one timer. This one would be a one timer, so we wouldn't have to keep shifting the, the the gear. So basically, you know, we could. I think it's probably smart to raise your basic abilities now. Hold back on any type of special, extra special abilities, uh, for the one to, for the end of this session, or possibly next session when it would actually make sense, and then you could either. Uh, cash those in and stay a seraph and um, just spend and get a, a hodgepodge of special skills or completely die, you know, push into one set because you'll have enough to buy more than one venison. Um, or I would let you then do a dual class p- pivot completely. Uh, and the only thing you would have to do is just, and I wouldn't even make you probably reroll your uh, uh, hit die. We would just say from then on out, your hit die would be a certain thing, whatever it is, you know. You would keep whatever you had at that point. Yeah. For me, I think I'm also kind of with Rocky in that uh, there's a lot yeah. of options to look at. 
<laughs> right now, especially with the in regards to the Seraph homebrew class. So I'm. Well, I'm what if we just do one thing then, and yeah. just I want to give you guys a fighting chance because I'm worried that you're going to get yourselves into trouble. Uh, <laughs> so wait, what wait. if we do uh, what if little we faith do the <laughs> die adjustment, and then just give you your uh, a bonus to your a bonus to your uh just say give, give you a save bonus uh a to hit bonus and which you pretty much get with almost any martial class and uh a bonus to uh a one point bonus to your uh seraph ability or you know what we'll give you a choice we'll give you a ser- you can either take the um to hit bonus of plus one or take a, a bonus to your special ability of plus one and then everything else will just be as you know, and then w- whenever you get to level you would basically either when, if you take a different class you take the better com- you know which you would take the higher combination of saves if one is better than the other and you would just swap you would just take whatever abilities but other than that everything would stay the same mm-hmm. it would actually interfere it would give you a chance I think I, I worry that you might die. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of like the idea of the former with the save bonuses for or for the time being, and uh, maybe attack bonus would be fine. Okay, so let's do this, uh, and this will be for even Scott. You too, this would count for you as well. Uh, All right. So basically, I don't know what your stamina is. You, everyone would roll a d8, add that plus a stamina bonus to your hit points uh, uh and in this particular case because you know we're a small group i'll let you re-roll any ones mm-hmm. so you can re-roll a one but other than that yeah so roll a d8 and add if you have a stamina so if you have a stamina bonus you get to add that to your hit points um obviously one so re-roll a one if you got a one i rolled and- a three and I have no stamina bonus, so... I'll be right back, and I'll get my... Also, let me check one thing about your uh, saves real quick. Let's take a look. I want to see if... So again, you would change out these if you choose a different class later. But because Seraph are so, you know, kind of cross the board malleable, you'd have a plus one across the board for reflex fort and will. Uh so whatever you're at now for your reflex save, your fortitude save, and your willpower save, add plus one to it. I'll tell that I'll I'll say that again for James when he gets back. You already gave us a plus one for a fortitude. From last time, did I from originally from character? Oh right? yeah, yeah, but that was because of your. That was because of something else, though. So now you have. So what you that that wasn't because of your level though. That was because of your uh, plus one for everything. Yeah, plus one across the board for your three saves, and then the last thing, just to even it out, you have one more plus one. You can allocate it one of two spots. You can put it towards a to hit bonus, uh, for uh you know, any type of combat to hit, or you can put it towards your special power, your 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 activation of your special power. And that would be the last thing. And everything else you can do when, it just gives you a little bit to kind of help you out before we, mm-hmm. in case you guys go a direction I don't expect. Mm-hmm. And you said it was a D8, right, for the hit bar? Yeah, D8, re-roll one, add your stamina mod as okay. well. Okay, so I rolled well for once. So. <laughs> I'm mad there. Got a seven. Uh, and then all your saves, uh, because Seraph are very, you know, all situations kind of guys, um, you're plus one to all your saves. Mm-hmm. And then you have the final thing we do is you have a plus one you could either add to your your special ability whenever you're using your latent your latency, because you all have these psychic powers, obviously. Or you can just take that plus one and make it a martial thing and make it to your combat rolls. What are the save bonuses again? Uh, plus one across the board. Plus one across the board. Gotcha. All three of them. And then, yeah. So it's not a huge bump up, but it's enough to make possibly keep you alive. 
free. And it won't and it won't massively interfere with um, you know, any type of other class you might you just might decide to pivot to. The 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 uh you know, if you guys decide you want to stay seraph, then when we get to the le- it's when we get to the popper point where you would know what you could specialize in, then you would I would give you your venison points and you could just pick what you want, or you could then pivot towards or you could say, screw this seraph crap, I want to be a thief. And you could do that. Yeah. Then. All right. And I'll let you, I won't even make you change your hit points. I'll, even if it's less, if it's less or more, the only thing I'll do is make you, I'll just change your saves. Uh, we'll just change whatever the level one save bonuses yeah. are to what they are for the other class. But if you say a seraph, it'll just be the same. Okay. For now, that sounds good to me. Yeah, it sounds, I think yeah. that sounds like a best of both worlds kind of situation. Uh, does that make sense, Scott? All that stuff? Hey, sorry, gang. My internet's being a little unstable. Oh, no, you're good. Did that make sense, what I was saying, though? Yeah, I, I missed a little bit of that, but I'm, I think I'm... So you got... you Did you roll another D8 and add that to your uh, to your hit points? Yeah. Yeah, I rolled a three, so... And I can't remember. Th- do you have a stamina bonus? Uh, no stamina bonus. Okay, so that's three. And then you add one plus one to all your, your three saving throws? Yeah, yeah. And then I did a plus one to my... Uh, my ability all right sweet Start, you know perfect then we are good we are good to gizzo right mm-hmm. keeping up so mm-hmm. far and i'm drowning in numbers yet and a lot of you can you can uh if you don't have to do it now but don't forget if you're gonna play uh your brother or anybody else's character again to do that for them do them a kindness mm-hmm. oh. it, and do it. it doesn't have to be this week yeah we'll remind her <laughs> um yeah, you'll need okay. it. Okay. So you are uh you just got inside the 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 the, the bay doors, right? <laughs> um the ship just narrowly avoided getting munched by the uh uh the, the little shop of horrors munchy guy. Um you are flying forward towards uh the holy mountain of Selene, possibly the the lander ship from your uh uh past there's two open landing bays that you can see from your point of view there's one several you know there's one about 50 feet lower than another one 50 or maybe a little bit more than 50 feet lower like there's a lower docking bay and a higher docking bay the higher docking bay is cleaner is more devoid of like you know, vines and jungly crap. The lower one's a little overgrown, um, but is also uh, uh, fine. Um, I can't remember if you guys had decided before. Obviously, you're not in control of the ship, but um, basically, uh, does every? I guess I mean it's a small ship. You guys are all within earshot of the pilot. Who? Uh, so you realize that the ship uh, did not veer off course when it uh when it went when he went out there to help you to rescue you mm-hmm. and that is because there is another person sitting in the pilot seat of the ship which the door to the pilot the cockpit's open you can very much it wasn't alive you can see in and uh scott's character you are sitting you are piloting this guy's ship he kind of field promoted you okay yeah uh, when he rescued you, and you i can remember which way is up on this thing you recognize this guy. You don't really remember necessarily his name. He was on your ship. He's one of your backup crew. He was one of the ones that stayed behind when you're, you know, when you guys went in the woods. Remember, mm-hmm. there were a few more agents that stayed back with the overseer. Yeah. So this character is one of them. You recognize him as one of your, one of your own. Um, maybe uh, less of a scientific specialist. Why he was held back, but uh, definitely a uh, a potent. Uh, who has a, a lot of the same, you know, he's not a pure human. He's been, you know, he's been modified like you guys have been modified with the, you know, with the uh, anti-aging stuff and whatever. But anyway, uh, mm-hmm. he'd probably have to remind you his name and stuff because you guys are dicks and don't remember. Oh, I mean, bad people don't remember. Yeah. And, uh, Richards. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and you probably remember them. You'd remember them too. So sure, we recognize can, each other. You can kind of like say hi and you know introduce yourself. And notice that you're being spotted. Yeah, Marcus perks up upon seeing 
believe Dash was it? Yeah, Dash. Yeah, Dash. That's that's good. He did. He sent you a birthday card. Names he are hard to remember. I remember. <laughs> I remembered you and sent you a birthday card on your birthday. Marcus, yeah. good to see you again. Just, Glad you made it out of there. It's just nice to see a, another survivor. How? What happened? How did you make it out of all that? Do you need a reminder, or do you do you remember? Uh, well, got pretty hairy back there at the, I guess the landing, sh- and uh, Clay, you'll have to ref- you'll have to fill me in a little bit here, but oh, yeah, I, I know little- that there was there was kind of a a dubious rescue, you know, some this other <laughs> ship that showed up. You guys were you guys had split. Yeah, you guys were ambushed by a um. So you guys were ambushed when you were back on the with the overseer on the ship. Your ship was attacked. The second that the main group went off into the woods, you guys were ambushed by these guys in that strange black uh, armor, which also also had like las scepters, like your laser weapons, but older versions of them. The ones that seemed to know that you guys were coming and were able to pinpoint your position. Um, you guys had a pretty grueling fight. Some people, some other guys got killed. And uh, at one point, your overseer ordered you to make a to basically make a dash for cover because he knew the ship was going to go down he knew he wouldn't be able to he was you know you weren't sure if he was being magnanimous or whatever but as soon as you and a few other people made a dash for cover when there was an opening um he took the ship off by himself mm. and you're like you're not sure if he was doing you a favor or if he was being a, a richard and escaping um mm-hmm. but yeah your overseer just left you there and you basically saw the walls closing in then you know your 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 enemies were not eliminated but then out of nowhere another ship shows up this one that you're on now yeah and a guy came down and rescued you um you and he hasn't even introduced himself to them yet but you know his name his name is uh barris he's his his name is captain agata (laughs) or barris yeah captain agata um and he's this guy who like saved your life and then asked you to hop in the seat when he was like rescuing the rest of your friends to take control of the ship. That's what happened. Because, and you realize it was basically very similar. This is definitely like pre imperial, but like Earth design ship. So mm-hmm. it's in that weird gray period between the exodus from Earth and now. Yeah. So the so, controls were maybe a little wonky, but I was able to figure it out. Yeah, it flies, it up. Keep it flies up. like an F sixteen. You're good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of you know you you escaped. You know you got a you know you got what you you rescued what you could off the ship, which is not that much off your original ship. And the one that just got eaten up. Um, also, <laughs> you know one other thing too uh, that was that was probably guessed by the rest of your group, but never confirmed, is that when the fir- when the attack first started happening. There was a valid attempt uh, from you, from both you and the overseer to try to get in contact with the mothership up, up in space, but your signal was jammed. You also had troubles with jamming. We did too. Yeah, I figure out what that's about. Everything I keep learning about this this day just sounds like a giant nightmare. Well, the one person that looks very happy right now and very kind of jovial is old Captain Agata, who kind of like once he makes sure everybody's in there and good, he kind of pats people on the back and makes sure the door is nice and shut and the air conditioning's on. And he kind of comes back around to you guys. He's like, Where were you headed? Which you were going in the docking bay, right? Which one do you want to go into? I'll take this. Wherever you want. Who are you first? I'm your new best friend. Captain Agata, but you can call me Barris. Yeah, Marcus. Not much more than your name either. Like, <laughs> but more, you know, if you like to use the chain of command. I have so many questions for you guys. I'm sure you have for me too. But, you know, let's first, let's get out of this thick. What do you say? There were two people on the bridge below us. Do you sense any other? Is there a sensor on this ship? Let us know. Are there are any survivors from. We Why lost two life signs, went dark, and then another two did not officially get tracked off. We're not sure what happened to them. There's nobody down there now. <sighs> it's possible that if there's so were there were the two that went dark, were there only two of them in total, or are there more than that originally? 
there were four in addition to us. Two, two died two them, for sure. Two of them we tracked down the remains to the water. Uh, well, the other two, I have no, I have no confirmation of their loss, but they're not dead there. It might be better if we. Well, if, I suppose if they, you don't have d- direct signals that they died. It's right. Well, you know, I think something. I know who your friends were. Those were those were monks of the staying hand. Am I correct? Yes. Right. Yeah, I've been here a long time. I know the drill. And I'll tell you what, those guys can take care of themselves. They control the lower deck here. And he kind of points them towards the lower uh, of the docking bays. They mm-hmm. tend to avoid the higher one, even though it looks nicer to me. So I don't know why. But um I'm happy to take you guys either of those two places, but we should get out of this out of this line of sight. This guy is not as disguisable as your more modern vessels. Well, I guess I'm st- am I still at the controls at this point? I'm I'm uh Yeah, you're kind of like doing like a he has you doing like a strafing run of the mountain so you can kind of like circle back and pick a point of entry. Okay. There's Mm -hmm. two obvious points here. Also, the mountain is so tall, it goes up. I mean, it goes up over a mile above your head. You know, you're you're at like the midpoint of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I I kind of try to set Lucia down in like a seat and make sure she she's fine. And I go over to Hydra and say, What do you think we should do at this point? when 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 you say that, I just reach out and I start uh, buckling it. Uh, Lucia in, and uh, I, you know, I, I, obviously, this guy's helpful. So I, I, you know, but I don't know him. I know the monks. Um, I'm, I'm fine either way. You know, like just, just as I mean, we made it this far together. You know, I want to keep it together. So you know, like I don't, I don't want to have any divisive ideas right now. So yeah. I'm, I'm cool with whatever you know you're cool with. Huh. Agreed. You guys, I'll tell you, I've always wondered what's up at that upper level, but I'll tell you this too, that if the staying hand avoids it, there's probably a good reason. So Mm. I'm always game for an adventure. I'm game to go up high, see what's up there and why it's nice and so pristine right now. I'm also good to go down and maybe you can meet up with your friends again down below. That They tend to hold up. They have a base camp not far within that lower level. Well, we have some privacy to speak before the staying hand possibly sees our shit. Are you asking him? Yeah, I'm still I'm talking to Agata. Oh yeah. Privacy. I mean, yeah, yeah. They don't they have no idea what's going on right now. I have Very... to transmit some codes to them so they know I give a little visual signal so they know it's me. Dash, take okay. us down. All right, to the lower yeah. entrance. Lower decks it is. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put this thing down. Yeah, you got this thing down. It works like a dream, right? Flies like a dream. They don't make them like this anymore. Your other one is not as nice and clipper as this one, huh? Not quite. They don't make you like they do anymore. No, no they sure don't. Um, you also guys notice at this point that uh, you, you vaguely remember this from being on your ship, but you kind of uh, see it now. Something that's kind of poked around the side of uh, of uh, um, um, Dash is a little tiny floating like like batteries not included, so a little robot drone. This is uh Laszlo. It's kind of my <laughs> eyes and ears. Laszlo when, mm-hmm. when I'm out in the field. Oh hi, Laszlo. He's my eyes and ears. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're not talking. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> That's Laszlo talking. He's a he's a oh gotcha. Bit, <laughs> a bit of a character, yeah. A bit of a character. A smart ass. A smart ass. <laughs> So I guess uh, when the captain goes back up, that uh, Dash will notice his injury and revealing he's uh, Andrew or, or Cyborg. Mm-hmm. What about the side? What did you say? Sorry, I missed that. I said when the captain goes back up front with mm-hmm. with uh, Dash, that uh, he'll notice that the injury that the captain got and that reveals that he's either an android or he's a cyborg. Who who's an android or a cyborg? Captain. Oh, this guy? He's rescued you? Yeah, he got injured uh, rescuing us. Oh, he has has that. Yeah, something's going on with his arm. Yeah. Yeah, That's right. 
his uh the arm that he used to rescue is like definitely has componentry in it it's um so yeah you're not sure if uh that means it's a cybernetic attachment or if it's actually like he's a straight up android mm -hmm. uh, don't yeah, maybe, we all maybe know? i would say like uh i've never seen tech like when i have seen tech like that maybe i'm kind of interested in that you know since i'm maybe a little bit of a gearhead anyways and you would have only noticed mm -hmm. it now be for the first time because uh, he just got injured, right? Yeah, it's not even a. Did he get injured, or did he just like yeah. have, he got ripped open or something? That's right, something mm -hmm. happened, like jacket sleeve or something, right? I can't remember. It yeah. might have been when he caught me, but I, 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 I was more focused on trying to save Lucia. His, arm is exposed. <laughs> his right arm is exposed now as having some like shiny metal parts inside. Mm -hmm. The the long and short of it, right? Okay. Yeah. So, um. And you would notice that for the first time to their dash, um, yeah. He, he's not doing. He's not going through any pains to to hide it. He's not ashamed of it. Um, also, if he's you know, the tech on it is also from an earlier age that you you know have only read about in the in between her ages because it's not like super, you know, disguisable look past for human like you know Constance was. Um, yeah, they need to be illegal. It's all like shiny, like a oh, god dang it. Sorry, uh, T1 T800 style. Got it. Mm -hmm. It was a great, she could tell us mm -hmm. if Lucia sorry. was awake, she could tell us, that yeah, maybe so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. what about Daniil? Oh, yes, Daniil, you exist. <laughs> yes, and Daniil's on here too, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, now that we say, now we saved her. Like, I think that uh, you know, like somehow they need to fade it in the background if we're not. Uh, no one yeah, knows. yeah. Daniel is tending to uh, oh, oh. Uh, uh, Lucia. Works with me. Busby, stop barking, dude. All right. <laughs> Busby set this thing playing. down. Busby's now playing Daniel. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All bring right. it down. Uh, I will ask a favor. Uh, uh, Alana, is there? Can we go uh, zero dark 30 for a minute? I need to use a little boy's room. All right. We're back. Sorry about that, guys. Um, so, yeah. So, um, the leaky unevent judge. uneventfully, um, your ship, go. You, you see kind of through, you, you get the sense from the porthole of the light of day kind of goes away into a darkness as you pull into the kind of the, the canopy of the uh, lower docking bay um the uh it's a pretty wide ovoid shape um probably about uh 100 feet wide by about uh, 20 feet 20 30 feet tall um mm -hmm. and uh yeah and it's definitely beset by a bunch of like vines not vines that are moving of their own accord though so that's good um and uh, as you go in, um, Agata kind of goes next to you, goes up to the panel next to you uh, to, to, to a dash and kind of like starts clicking off um, a sequence. And you see like your headlights, your headlamps, you high beam it a little, a little uh, maybe action. Cody action there. Very much like trying to order popcorn at the drive in. Um, <laughs> Would we would we understand what he's trying to signal? I mean, is that something um, we would maybe it, if we're not one hundred percent on this guy? Like, uh, could try to. Yeah. I would say I don't know. I think Anel. I think Anel's character would be the only one that would might know. Well, no. Um, anybody else have a military background? Uh, I mean, I understood yeah. some field si field signs before. Yeah, you kind of would, but, Scott yeah. Dash. You kind of would because of your uh, your specialty your background so you could try to um why don't you so uh oh, sorry what were you saying there james i was just gonna say i thought we had some knowledge of field science because we were trained is that yeah. so is I, but like, I don't know like ship to ship code and stuff like that oh okay. okay um then no well i will say i'll give dash i'll give you a <clears throat> chance if you want to make an intelligence check in this case um just roll a d20 and add your intelligence modifier to it if you have one. And um, you don't know what the target is, but. 
It's a yeah. Hail Mary for me. Plus zero. Yeah, I have a that's I mean, funny. Well, I think only I day, uh, you can only attempt it if you would have a chance of knowing it. it is, so I rolled an eight, and I only have, I have a plus oh, one okay. intelligence, so I probably didn't make out much. I'm gonna guess. <laughs> or if you want to do it unskilled, you could do it with a d10. You'd roll a d10 and add your modifier to it. But I don't think it's a type. Yeah, thing I'd probably be it. looking out to make to make out like one or two words just to kind of see if it's like the yeah. the, the what gist of what I well, I rolled a d20 and got an eight. And I, I have a plus one to intelligence, so Fine. um so you get you get a feeling that it's an arbitrary code. That it's no. not actually Morse code. You go, but you could be wrong. You don't necessarily trust that, but you definitely have a sense it's like, oh, this doesn't feel like anything. It just feels yeah. like dun, 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 kind of thing, you know? It doesn't feel too ominous at this point. I'm not I'm not getting any back. It's like K I L L G M. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, no, yeah, it, did, it didn't. It doesn't. It doesn't seem to con, to conform to your what little you remember of Morse code. Sure, uh, okay. be like a little pattern. Yeah, for entering yeah. the override, self destruct has been, has begun. Um, <laughs> you can now though because you kind of studied it. If you ever wanted to, for any reason in the future. Uh, you could probably repeat that code. That same pattern, yeah. Okay, might be. Probably repeat that pattern. File that away for later. Um. So yeah, and then he leaves the lights on, so you can kind of get a little bit of a lay of the land in here, and you see a very, uh, a very ancient, um, something weird. First of all, the first thing that throws everyone off, you're like, oh my god, why are we coming in sideways? Because you realize as you went in straight, and, and Scott, and your, your dash would notice, like, everybody else might have been distracted and not. Probably everyone else thinks that you guys pivoted to the side as you came in. Dash, because you were flying, you would notice that, no, you didn't pivot to the side. This ship is, the decks are built horizontally. Um, So there's not a deck underneath you. But also, you see that there are ships and there are loose ships that are not like tied down to anything that are literally sitting like the gravity wells on the side to your right where the ground is. There's like a weird like MC Escher situation with yeah. like docking. And then uh, a god is like, oh yeah, I, for I forgot to tell you about that. Um, yeah, it's okay. Just, just go to the side. Uh, in fact, maybe, maybe I should take over for you. It's kind of a tough landing if you haven't done it before. Yeah, I'm going to take your seat for you. I'm going to sit down and buckle up just in case uh, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. He very smoothly lands to the side like a fly on a wall. Um, and there's no like sense of like gravity boots or anything. It's just like sits like it's sitting on the ground. Um, I recommend not getting when you get out of the ship. I recommend not looking back out the uh, not looking out the docking bay doors. It'll throw you off. You might start vomiting. Uh, Captain, a little thing like that can throw you off. Captain, sir, um, we unfortunately, uh, before we had to vacate our ship, we're not able to uh, properly uh, arm and equip ourselves. And uh, uh, if uh, you'd be able to help me out in that that aspect, I'd appreciate it. Yes, please. <laughs> Mark yeah, is just... yeah, we can. Uh, I got a few little things. Now, keep in mind. Um, well, you wouldn't know this, I guess. Maybe it's time to explain this. But most of the stuff I have, anything I had that you would be used to, went out of went out of technical use, out of warranty years ago. So we got a bunch of sticks and rocks, so to speak. Um, he kind of goes over towards a munitions locker, which is a very battered in. That's kind of in the very similar spot as the one that you guys went to on your own ship. Opens it up, and you see a bunch of swords, uh, swords and flails and maces and all sorts of. There are some crossbows in there too. It's it's all kind of like when in Rome kind of weapons. Um, okay. I do have this old guy though, and he kind of like pushes him out of the way and pulls up this big. 
very large gun that you don't recognize, but you 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 would recognize it just from like the history books as some sort of slug caster. Ooh. But it's got a big old, a big old like uh trump like a trumpeted front, fluted front. Um, like a blunderbuss, blunderbuss. like a blunderbuss, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This guy, I can't, I can't, uh, can't, uh, I can't, I can't, I don't have the heart to part with it. Mm. Not but, the most efficient thing in the world, but if you're an elephant, you're coming at me. You're not coming at me anymore. But if you're two elephants, that second one's going to get me. There's mm. no way to reload it in time. Check this out. And he's like, he pulls out this giant, like, fist size basically little you know looks like a torpedo these things are originally not meant to be uh they're not they're not they don't throw bullets as such but this one's been well it's basically an elephant gun if you ever heard of that but it's been modified a little bit i have no idea who made it we just picked it up along the way Hmm. it's been here so long i can't even remember i mostly just like it for show but you guys, if it makes you feel uh, like a little safer, like a little bit, like a little swagger in your step, I'm perfectly fine with somebody carrying this. Is there a mace by chance in there? There is. Marcus kind of goes over, and, uh, assuming he can. I don't know if we're allowed yeah. to touch, but yeah, he goes over and picks up the uh, the. The handle of the mace. Father Mark is uh, doing some bad stereotyping, right? <laughs> kind of like a cleric. Let me get a mace. No, it's mm. kind of, um, mm. He can use a morning don't... star as like a little incense. Uh, <laughs> right, right. Thing, you know, yeah. yeah. Hey, I like maces. You can't judge me. <laughs> no, hey. <laughs> I appreciate no, uh, that. That was Marcus. Well, <laughs> appreciate a person that knows who they want, knows what they want in a weapon. I'll take one of each, except for the blend of us. One of what? One of each. I mean, there's a lot of good things in there. You probably don't want to load your, load yourself down too much. You could take there's like a sword and a mace and a and a uh, daggers. And, uh, what's that? Are there daggers too? How Guard many daggers? daggers? Yeah. Yeah, I'll take a dagger as well. Kind of how, piercing. How big are these uh, crossbows? This is. Like maybe like zebra strap and I throw it in my back. Kind of, I kind of like a two-handed. Got a pretty good shot at, at range. So mm-hmm. yeah, they're two-handed. So you'd have to kind of you'd have to sling it over your back. But yeah, I think if it wasn't too cumbersome, I'd probably grab it. Like the you know, I wouldn't want to be like held down. Yeah, I mean you could be able to make a make a run for it without it. this big thing on my back. It might be annoying if you're running. It might be slapping against your back. Mm-hmm. But like, All right, I'll like, keep it on there for now. I'll throw that. For if you we're giving out free weapons. Yeah. Is the blunderbuss still up for grabs, or did I miss your? Oh, that? Anyway, so okay. that take thing's it. a beast. It. it is. It's 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 a cumbersome beast. That yeah, that sounds too much. Yeah, I've got the. Yeah. I've got the strength and agility to probably deal. With. Yeah, you can totally take it. It's yeah. gonna be. Uh, it's 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 a two hander for sure. It's probably about five feet long. Yeah. Oh, well, one in doubt and one in Rome. But yeah, it's, uh, it's a it, definitely, it definitely uh it definitely has a uh it definitely carries a uh, uh it, it sends a message yeah mark is all about messages <laughs> <laughs> but if anybody wants to take so basically we haven't even gone over encumbrance stuff yet i just go towards the whole like slot based thing where you know you have as many as you have strength and mm-hmm. like anything two-handed takes two slots um mm-hmm. so like the blunderbuss i was like three all right gotcha i'll just note that down. Um, they, so they can we a little cumbersome uh um, include ammo and not anything you need ammo That's ammo can take one slot and it's like for an indeterminate amount like it's, as long as it's not unreasonable so four slots four if you're taking one of everything or no no he said the Bundrus is three, and I was asking, does that include ammo? Oh, or... right. Well, there, yeah, that's different. Yeah, so there's not a lot of ammo for it to begin with. So I'll give the ammo for free. There's only like five shots that you can find in there. Okay. And uh, those are those like big, big rocks. Yeah. Are there any, by chance, spears, short spears? No spears. 
uh there is weirdly a trident in there like a steel trident oh that's cool i'll take a trident yeah. uh, get your a... give the cook his fork <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so the swords are all like hydro with the trident i like it <laughs> so there's oh, like there. two long swords which are two slaughters um there's two short swords that are two or actually like Sorry, like four short swords, which are one slaughters. Um, there's the trident, which is a two slaughter. Um, then there's like three of those, the three of the full size crossbows. Um, and um, what about a short sword? Is there one short sword? There three of them there. Yeah, so you could there, you could take a short three sword. or four, right? Yeah, I'll take, yeah. I'll, last thing I'll take is one short sword. For a slashing, yeah. And then there's like a special case that's kind of like a leather case in there that looks like a medium sized something or other. Um, and uh, the captain kind of goes around and kind of opens that one up and pulls out a nice rapier. It's like I'm a big fan of the of the more elegant wet blades, personally. Mm -hmm. I don't know oh. if he's you guys this in the service anymore, but I was a fencing master and a dually and a duelist back when I was in the service. Mm. They don't teach you that. <laughs> uh, well, there's potential to improve at least if somebody wants to take that up. Well, I thought he took it. I'll take it. Huh? The, ca the captain's. Well, how much uh, are you loading yourself down with there, Rocky? <laughs> what do you got? So far, I have a trident and maybe a rapier. Mm -hmm. Oh, is there a sling? Uh, no, there's no sling. Okay, I could probably just make a sling, couldn't I? Like a makeshift sling. Uh, you could probably make one. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, and a, a crossbow. There is a blow yeah. dart one, though. Ooh, I'll take a blow dart. You have to have pointed out to you because it, this looks like a tube. Instead of a, a crossbow, I'd rather a blow dart. You guys can fight over that one. Uh, you can have, you can keep that one. I'll I'll I'm gonna kind of travel light, but I want to with the crossbow. I think it's uh, I would think it you know probably carry some ammo, can reload it a little quicker, maybe. I don't know, maybe not. Mm. Well, okay. As you guys are kind of doing that, like Captain's like, say, uh, I didn't get a chance to ask you guys what year on the what year on the calendar is it back where you guys come from. Uh, George, I got a question. What year on the calendar? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, uh, I'll tell you in a minute. Not, I mean, you can just give him the year. It's basically, uh, it's basically the equivalent of, it's not the, the it's not 40,000, but it's like in that, it's, it, it, it evens out with the imperial calendar. Let me figure it. Let me get yeah. the, I just do here. I just mess it up. Appropriate answer uh, inserted. Appropriate yeah. answer. Inserted. Yeah. It's current year on, is the it's current actually another one of those sheets I sent you, but it doesn't matter. It's like 32 something or other. Um, yeah. uh, but That's anyway, what we said. We yeah, said. whatever you yeah. said. Yeah. According to... Oh, sorry, Rob. No, like, why, why do you ask? I mean... Uh, what year well, did you the first moment you see the kind of, like the, the grin leave his face for a second, just for a moment, and he's just like, kind of nods, he's like, yep. Well... It's been a while, my friends. It's been a while. You guys, I recognize. I recognize the outfit. He kind of like points to one of your, uh, the, he one of your exposed skin suit sleeves, which you have a very tiny like hidden amongst the weave is the logo for your uh, for your unit for the for the uh, uh, the order of uh, the Bureau of Survey, which is like an owl face, mm -hmm. but it's kind of like you'd have to know to look for it to know it. Mm -hmm. he actually can then points down to his belt, his big brass belt buckle, which is a, a slightly different version of that same symbol, but much more gaudy. <laughs> um, Cowboy. What about uh, equipment or communicators? Oh, yeah. Uh, nothing works as technological. It all died years ago, guys. I barely keep this thing alive. They, they never... Sorry, go ahead. I was just saying, no parallels. 
uh parallels like uh can with the string rope oh yeah yeah no. yeah i was gonna ask if you ever or marcus asks you ever thought about making a generator at all nothing you know what's the point when you're here you know i have a i keep the i keep the hydrogen fuel cells up on this guy that's about you know just because i need this but other than that i try to avoid tech because the problem with tech is other people can use it too people that shouldn't have it you remember our our ethy code right i still do it's been a long time still follow the ethy code understandable i was thinking in private but yes no comment so i've learned that there is no private in this world which kind of explains your buddies that came here to try to kill you yes what do you know about these black armored people they are natives locals who know way more than they should know we, we questioned are, one, and they said they came from across the sea looking for us, of all things. They did. That's true. They did. See, a little bit, of, I'll give you a little bit of backstory by myself, is that uh, I did your job, well, let's see, it must have been about 13,000 years ago. Third, excuse me. Yeah, roughly about thirteen thousand years ago, I think. I may, maybe give or two, give or take another a century. You don't look a year over twelve. Yeah, well, you know, I, I moisturize. Um, <laughs> basically, we. I have to assume that you're here for the same reason I was here, looking for the lost colony. Does that sound familiar? More than you'd. Maybe you'd picking know. up on a distress beacon, maybe one that we're right around right now surrounding mm-hmm. us yeah well let's just say this every thousand years or so your uh friendly neighborhood uh imperial offices will get very patriotic and want to send remember that they've lost they have not recovered all their lost colony ships from the grand exodus and as a political move will usually around the time a new emperor is installed to make everybody happy we'll send out a a fool's errand in search for uh you know the fabled lost colony so i have no idea how many between me and you had happened but you and i you guys and i i believe we we're the only ones that hit the jackpot except once we hit that jackpot we were kind of left for our own devices turns out it was a one-way trip not That's... a lot of you think that uh, they actively know this is the place, or this was just pure chance? I can't tell for sure. <sighs> well, launch then... enough ships, you launch enough ships in random directions. I guess even in a universe as large as the one we're in, you might eventually find. It. You know what do they hmm. say about a broken clock? Hmm. So after the sc- our scout ship supposedly has abandoned us, it would seem. So is this also in the pattern? Yeah. Oh, I don't even know. For all I know, there's a little skeleton crewed scout ship from 13,000 years ago up in the skate in space right now. We spent some trying to trying, trying to get it down in the past. Those mm-hmm. of us who survived. Now, we didn't have to contend with the same problems you had because we were the first. Which probably begs to explain exactly well, I can't exactly tell you much more about the people that attack you than that they are natives and that they were operating under the instruction of one of my own crew members. Oh. The, when we realize that I have a, and this is something you have to break to you guys too, you're probably going to have to make a choice coming up here pretty soon. Because when we realize that there was no homecoming committee no one to extract us. We had to decide what to do with ourselves and the rest of our existences. And thank, thankfully for our our, our, our Seraph Ulta Masters, they made it so convenient that we are basically live without a termination date. So how do you fill that time? Some of us 
you know, we're very much about the ethic code and decided that we would live and do our jobs as embedded agents and just hope that that would fill the empty space in our hearts and then that would be worth something. A job well done, as they say. Others became more mercenary. Hmm. You ever heard of this guy? 20th century guy. Arthur C. Clarke. He's a science fiction writer. And so they used to write stories about what we do now. So that any advanced in technology of a civilization might come off as uh, magic to a sufficiently undeveloped. Hmm. I'm probably getting the quote. Those, how do you know about that? That that information's mostly I've had a lot of time. gone. Yes. Well, it's funny what happens when uh, you poke around in places you're not supposed to poke around. I've been inside this, you know, this is not my first trip inside Celine here. The old site used to run this ship. And they kept forbidden databases. Some of the easier stuff to get to, the less important stuff, I've been able to pull off the subcomputers on lower decks. The stuff, the real good stuff, though, up top. So we have to make our way there if we want to even try and finish this mission. But here's the thing, you guys. Those guys who attacked you. I mean, do what you want. I, I'm not here to, to, to I'm not here to like rain on anybody's party, but like basically decisions were made. Some people decided to live, I don't know, essentially as gods, knowing that they could completely even the, the worst amongst us was more powerful than the most the greatest amongst the locals. Some of them became prophets or deities of their own right. Um others became warlords. Our engineer, for example, nerdy little guy. Kind of a kind of a joke. Well, he was. Now he's the greatest war chief of the northern barbarian tribes. And all because he has a fusion reactor that he stole from our lander. The land the, the, the reactor in this guy is refurbished. It's a lot of like scuttling around getting small things. The reactor in this ship I had to steal from, I had to basically rebuild from parts I found from the uh, galley in this thing, in Celine. Marcus kind of puts his hands on his face or just his head in his hands and is just kind of a little in disbelief and says this, this is a lot to take in. Well, my our our engineer buddy, the warlord, he was an opportunist. He just went where the people wouldn't call him a jerk or a nerd, and now he's this terrible tyrant. And then you've got other guys. You have idealists like our buddy Kalen, our science officer. Mm -hmm. I see a name might ring a bell because it's the same name that was uttered by um, that one that one soldier you guys took hostage for a while. Mm -hmm. the, head of the one that like was yeah the one that I, was, I say that out loud say again <laughs> I say that out loud what did you say I'll be right back and it was mind control what about mind control sorry I missed that about the guy we captured oh no 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 um wait I still, I still understand what about the mind control Hy Hydra says says something about uh we experienced uh some some someone saying that they are mind controlled. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if you consider mind control being just like bad philosophy that you ingest and do of your own free will, but you kind of write it off, then I suppose it's mind control. No. Was there because our overseer was mind controlled as well? I don't think your overseer is mind controlled. Well, has he suddenly uh, uh, after uh, after being very set in his ways and following uh, orders and directives and things like that, he began to communicate in a way that was completely different from his normal self and then additionally evolved to become believing that we are all traitors. Yeah. He his long wave was blocked. 
but I, I intercepted some short wave from him. He was transmitting authorization codes for termination to take you out. He wanted it documented. He believed that you were working for, well, I'm not 100% sure, but he seemed pretty convinced that you you had were some sort of double agent, according to what he was saying. He apparently stumbled on some data. He had mentioned something about, I think it was a name that he said he got the data from. Something, uh, is there, does the name Constance mean anything to you? Yes. She was our android. Yeah. It sounded like he, that makes sense. It sounded like he, he mind tapped her and found out something that led him to believe that she activated you as agents for a different non incredible cause. Hmm. He was trying to, apparently he was like he was trying to figure out how these, uh, the Lintaki, who were the guys who attacked you, how they found you, how they knew you were coming. Yeah. Marcus kind of remembers. Well, I was just going to say Marcus remembers the message he got on his own personal systems and he keeps it to himself. For now. Um, so Kalen Doval, he's a, he was a good man. He's still a good man. Idealist believes in a different type of rulership and not repeating the sins of the past. He thinks the Lentaki are the ones that will help him achieve this goal to destroy any kingdoms before they can reach a tyrannical level. To do that, he is convinced that not only does he want to destroy any imperial envoys that come down here, that he wants to claim their 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 fusion cores and their and their uh, Numa drives. Not sure why. Kind of had a aching suspicion. He's he's uh, tempted to. Uh, fly a ship all the way back to the Imperium and destroy the Empire, which is crazy, but, you know, he's an idealist. So the, uh, the, the Lintaki, these, the, they are, um, they believe themselves to be wielders of magic. Magic. And they, uh, they think that they're, he's their prophet. He's not their leader, but he's their prophet. And he has the full backing of their, of their society, their exiled society. And these were the ones in sorry, this just making sure that out, out yes. character. Is this a this is the black armored mm -hmm. that we're thinking? Okay. The reason why the lights are flickering in this place and why you're not getting a warm welcome has to do with Lentaki. Two thousand mm -hmm. years ago they tried to take out this thing and basically blew up one of the one of the, the backup fusion cores or the Numa cores, and it literally made a cataclysm across the land and reshaped everything. That's why that uh, that that lake below you, the churn, is so mut mutagen, mutagenic. Hmm. Basically, made his own little Chernobyl. If you catch the reference, probably not. But I'll just act like I did. <laughs> History. What's that? Not a long. That's all I really know. So you might, you know, I had to make a decision too. So what do I do? I've integrated. But I also have a bit of a soft spot for the Ethi code. So I do my part. I go around. I live my life. And if I see that there's any danger of old Kalen trying to uh, take something that should not be taken in the name of uh, going against his former masters, I do my part. That's why you're alive. Hmm. Thank no, you. I have nothing to do with the staying hand. Yeah. Who? What about those you you've also saved? Are they still anybody still around after your original crew? I've lost track of most of them. 
I tend to only keep track of the ones that cause trouble. Right now, there's only about two of them I have to worry about. One of them I love as a brother, Kalen. He's a good guy. He's just got some interesting theories about how Wait, he did try to kill us. He didn't try to kill you. His people did. They're zealots. He's the prophet, man. Don't, don't, don't equate the man with them. The Lentaki are terrible. They're blood mages, they call themselves. So he's just a good <laughs> apple. <laughs> the Your powers. So here's the thing you need to... You don't want to under, underestimate the people of this world, my friends. We all are seraph because we have special latent abilities. Those do not cease to exist here. Those who have them here, they read them differently. They master them differently. They speak to the Numa that lives inside them differently. They are considered wizards or sorcerers or whatever you want to call it. Instead of being an adaptation of the mind, they see this magic. And there are some that are very, very powerful that could take all of us out without a second thought. Don't underestimate the local. So, uh, I hate to cut this history lesson short, but uh, do you have rope rations? Like, like I said, like any counterparts to basic equipment that we would need to to step off the ship with? Well, yeah, a little bit of stuff. We can give you not not too much, but a little bit. Sure. Where do you think you're headed from here? Um, the only person that knows we haven't been here. We so, have much to still cat probably cat talk about. A... What were your orders? Your original orders? You already stated them. No, why were your group separated from the rest of the ship? It seems that our overseer got a little overzealous upon finding out he found the planet and sent us ahead before we had a proper time to scan the planet. It seems that didn't help anything. In addition to what happened and we were ill-prepared to sent us to get to the master computer, didn't he? To figure yeah. out what the nature of the beacon to put a real yes. finish on things, didn't he? Yes. You're saying most of the good information is in the uh, dock that's a little further up, right? Oh, all the way at the top. So we probably wouldn't want to hoof it on foot. Is that something where do we think we should hop back in and fire up the engines? And I've been slowly uh, generating a uh, an interior map of the place I can get to in here. Um, there are working lifts in various spots throughout okay. this. Place. It's kind of like we're gonna be here for a while. It's, uh, maybe explore it systematically, you know, one one into the other. If we're not in imminent danger, well, I wouldn't we say have, that. there are a lot of we have all the time in the world. Sorry, guy. No, no, you're fine. He kind of looks out the window, and it looks like we have company. Mm -hmm. Monks of the staying hand, or worse. <laughs> We see a few of them outside wearing their same kind of garb. Should we change our clothes slightly? They already know who you are. Yeah. I was thinking more for later, but yes. I don't think I've met yeah, the, in the, had the pleasure of meeting the monks yet. Yeah, clothes, equipment, all that kind of good stuff that we make. Well, laundry your basket over there. You can pull a bunch of old rags out of there. You get a points to an old wicker hamper. Mm -hmm. Like those, by the way, the, the smell is a feature, not a bug. <laughs> Makes it authentic. Very well. You don't want it smelling like a mountain fresh air. It would be a, a little bit of a tell. Mm -hmm. I will tell you guys one thing that we've never been able to figure out, though. The original, the original colonist, the colonists that live this planet, more than likely. Though I can't confirm, I won't be able to confirm until you get to the computer. More than likely, there's descendants from the colonists who came here. 
But you have to remember, this colony went out after the secrets of the Eretzinu and the, and, the, and the Munumo was discovered. Therefore, it was commanded by Ulta. Those who could not die, they're ageless. And I've not, I've never mm-hmm. seen Ulta on this world. There are no Ulta of them here. You wouldn't, they're not the type to just disappear. They're too mad right. for that. I have my suspicions about their fate, but I'd be very curious to know what that computer could tell you about them because they're that's one of the big secrets. And that could potentially lead to an option of getting out of here if that's something you'd like to do. Me, I'm kind of used to it. I'm fine sticking around. Well, it sounds like if we're going to try, we'll need your help. If you want to answer the mysteries, at least, and give us all an option. Well, you tell me what you're thinking. I'm thinking an expedition's in order, at the very least. Maybe try and find more out to the top. Yeah, let's wait and see. let you finish generating your map and then <laughs> head out. Does it make more sense to uh, fly up to the top dock deck or just uh, take one of the lifts up? You don't want to. Hold it there. Okay, got it. See, a lot of genetic things were happened here since you guys, you haven't really got the lay of the land yet. You've only seen a few of the more like normal looking locals. It's probably worth it for you to know that uh, <laughs> someone laughing out loud after this got here 40 plus thousand years ago, someone decided to uh, tamper with stuff. Possibly the local flora fauna, possibly the stuff that was actually shipped along in the ship in the ark. But um, uh, here we got dragons. I don't know. Excuse me. Like from when you were a kid, and your mom read you about dragons, they exist here. Guaranteed, they're genetically designed in the form. I'm th- so they big flapping wings, tails, breathe fire. Those things, yes, they're here. Oh, roost up at the, they tend to roost on the exterior and near the top. This mission just gets better and better. Uh, coming from uh, a trade family of a guild world, uh, um, they, they did not teach us such superfluous knowledge. You know, at a young age, it was taught chemistry and math to be able to count and count money and make money and brew, brew and chemist things. Yep, I hear you. No, I think that, you know, my guess is that the Ulta have something to do with that. There are a lot of things here that were either modified from what was inside the ship to begin with or modified from whatever is native to this world. Honestly, I don't know which is which anymore because I never, I have no access to the logs. I don't know what here is genuine, true native life and what it was actually genetically modified. The more I hear about this place. Yeah. Yeah. The more I hear about this place, the more it sounds like a giant experiment as if someone's trying to do this. Maybe so. Or maybe, uh, maybe, you know, these people just saw an opportunity and decided to cash in on it. Who knows? You might you have an opportunity to find out something that I tell you what I'm not going up there. I'm too comfortable. <laughs> you gave us the choice originally. You just want to explore there. Oh, that's only a portion of the way up. That thing, yeah, we're talking about. You got a good. What is it? He's like kind of guesstimating his head. There's about six or seven more miles up. <laughs> Filled with creatures, perhaps? Who knows? Never been anywhere near it. Staying hand doesn't go there. I have a tendency to, to not go where they don't go. We're going to meet them, so hopefully we'll find out uh, more information and make a decision then about what we're ultimately going to do. 
but as long as we know that you're willing to help us with what we want to do. Well, you know, I got you in here. I'm happy to give you guys a few lunches and to get you looking like a fashionable local. Mm-hmm. Um, is, is there a way we could keep in contact at least, even if it's long form and not instant? Yeah, you can here. Let's go, talk, let's go out and talk to the locals. The mm-hmm. drone. What about me? Um, well, you could help us stay in contact with the, the captain's ship, can't you? Hey, I have nothing mm-hmm. to do with this guy. I'm with this one. He point. He kind of like his little robotic arm points at uh, Dash. But you said you were accessing things on the ship, so you must know how to do that. Yeah, if I uh, I have a real long range communicator, mm-hmm. but then on the other side, um, are you going to be able to morph to fit in with this world? Yeah, sure. What do they got here? They have like flying fruit bats. He's gonna asking uh, the captain. Sure, they got a lot of weird things. Yeah, you put a fruit bat pelt on me, and I'm fine. Is this a little d- disguise for Laszlo to help blend in? This guy asking about, look at him. He's asking me if I fit in. He gets me stinky robes, I suppose. Yeesh, he's humans, I swear to God. They dress him up like Orko. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Turn on his headlights, just two little floating on. So we don't talk about this outside of this room, but the head of this the, the head of this detachment of the staying hand has a communicator. It's kind um, of a, it's a little sacrilegious for them to have it, but they have one. You need me, you can get a hold of me that way. That's understandable then. How long are you gonna be yeah. staying here? No longer than I have to. And in but fact, wait for us. Well, I can come back. Okay. You to wait for you're going to be in here a while, or you're never going to be back. One or the other. This is not a quick one. I don't think. It depends on if you how easily you guys give up. Got all time in the world. So your overseer's dead, right? Say uh Imperium's not. So. Yeah, Imperium's not coming for you. Well, uh, you guys have a you guys have a very similar choice that we had. We have a ship or uh, orbiting the planet right now. Mm-hmm. All I know is that on my detachment, the way the seraph work, and I'm not sure if it's changed in your era than from my era, but uh, some of us weren't exactly given a choice to join. We were tested as children, found out to be imbued with special talents and kind of drafted. So when a few of us had the opportunity to uh, be freed from the yoke of the Imperium and our obligations, some of us took the ground. Some of them did it in a bad way, like our war Mm -hmm. friend, and some have just been living quiet lives and I haven't heard hide or tail from them in, in a very long time. But you know, that's between... Unfortunately... There's a lot of there's a lot of really interesting places and people in this world and don't underestimate mm-hmm. them. And there are things that you could learn here that you might be surprised. Oh, but, well, before you if, before if you do go, unknown, sorry. Mm-hmm. Just be careful who before you, you go. <laughs> I was just gonna ask if uh he had would share his data or, or his archives with us. In a way we could possibly read what he's gotten a hold of so far <laughs> on our own time. See, that's the thing. We don't have data pads anymore. It's all here. Because here's the thing. I don't keep stuff. Because I've learned that when you keep stuff, other people can get that stuff. People shouldn't have that stuff. We learned the lesson years ago, actually in this very wood, in the dull wood that you're in right now, uh, we used to have a safe house 
a couple of these a couple of these safe houses have been established in various places. Most of them have been discovered. Some of them are still hidden. Basically, we all made a pact early on when we split up and went our separate ways. We said that we'd meet back up every five years just for old time's sake and to talk about what we've discovered in this land. You know, kind of an old uh, reunion of the old Seraf order. And that safe house also had some of our hidden tech. Just in case. I was always against it, but I was outvoted. And, uh, you know, I hate to be the somebody who said, I told you so, but a couple of those places fell. Again, you underestimate these locals. Bad things happen. There may be one or two of our safe houses still in existence. I haven't checked up on them in many, many years. Hmm. But beyond that, I have learned the very hard one lesson that I keep nothing in physical form. No data, no tech. Because if it's important enough for me to remember it, I'm going to remember it. And if it's that important, it could give somebody else. Well, it could do that interference. It could ba basically violate the ethic code of non-interference. And that's not just something that's there for moral reasons. It's there for dangerous reasons, too. I used to think it was kind of like goody two-shoes, this or that. But it's it's not just that. See, there's a ship in orbit right now. It's not completely out of the question that those Lintaki could get that ship. And who knows what they would do then. Also, I'm not going to worry about that because I feel like that I've earned the right to say that's not my problem anymore. But, you know, don't make it easy for them, okay? Just do me that solid. Understandable. But let's go talk out to your uh, staying your new your new friend, staying hand friends out there, and then uh, I'll leave you in their good and capable hands. And I'll get back to my. Uh, I'll be around. Don't worry about that. Cool. Are those are the are the clothes in the hamper his clothes or like a variety of clothes? It's a variety. It's like. It's like collected. Uh, it's collected, and uh, as you're kind of going through them, you notice a couple of them are like some of them have scorch marks. Some of them have a little bit of blood stains on them too, intermixed. <laughs> kind of... Sorry, guys, Scott. I said that's very pleasant. That <laughs> it's bloody uh, scorched. I think I, I think I would probably pay, look through and try to find something that doesn't has the least amount of bodily fluids. Yeah, I mean, most of them are just kind of gnarly, but they're purposely gnarly. Some of them, though, there you do notice like one or two, one or two of them that actually have very distinct uh, last scepter blast marks on them. Hmm. I see. He, uh, as you guys are doing that, he opens up the uh, the, the, the 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 folding down door, the, the 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 landing door. At the bottom of which you see about six, uh, six of the monks. Two of them you recognize. Mm -hmm. It's a two oh, well, there we go. you couldn't place. It was a uh, yeah, Amanya and uh, uh, Pavia and Amanya. Mm -hmm. The two, uh, there, and actually. Weirdly enough, there's the only two women of the of the six of the two that were in your your group that survived somehow. Oh, thank goodness you're alive. We were surprised to see you in such form too. You have a good friend here with Barris. I think I'm starting to feel a little embarrassed of these uh, shabby clothes that I put around now that there's a. Uh... There's guest. <laughs> no, you do well to wear those. Don't let anyone on. There are eyes in this world that know what to look for. And those eyes are greedy and hungry and seek your riches. 
Good don't give know. them. Don't give them the chance. They have the upper hand here. It's their turf. Yeah, the lady's right. She's right. All right. Function of her fashion for now. You can wear your skiing suits underneath. They're meant to be like body stockings. So the, yeah. your armor benefits with those. Um, Maybe the hand has better clothes than the ship does. That too. It'd be good to have a mix and kind of mix and match. Make it seem more patchwork. Are you saying that out? Are you asking that out loud or just wondering about that out loud? I'm complaining about that out loud. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would. They get a little testy if you talk to them about those robes. Those are like don't ask them about the robes. They're a little uh, very, they, you know, they're normally cool. They get a little, they get a little like uh, secret dinner club about those robes. <laughs> Apparently you have to get like a few merit badges to get one of those. So uh, it's kind of, you know, they don't just give them away. We'll see. <laughs> The um, he kind of if you guys are done, he escorts you down. Yeah, I think did we get loaded up with everything we all the weapons and oh, yeah, did you guys I think so? Did you notate what you took, well, uh, no weapons, but no equipment. Oh, there's not a lot of equipment. Yeah, um, he had like a week's worth of rations for everybody. Split for everybody, two, you have some rations yeah. in your personal kits, too. Yeah. Well, yeah, didn't we lose those those kits once we died? We have nothing. Oh, oh that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's that's right. Right. Last scepter's nothing. I I've still got about. Uh, I mean, yeah, I'm still not got a few last scepters. I'm not offering up anything. You know, I'm. Yeah, you have yours. I don't know you, don't know you guys yet, but uh, but you know, I've still got my my basic oh. questions. You you can probably yeah. tell that I'm still carrying uh a decent amount of stuff on me, like you know your the basic uh. Necessities. Mm. I guess well, you're clock properly mine. geared. Yeah, you, I'm sure you guys are clocking my my equipment a little bit, but I'm not. Mm. Uh, but you know, my well, God is able to make a few care packages for you guys. Some small care packages that are kind of like I'll just say they're the same. Uh, basically, um, able to give you guys about a week's worth of rations each, like mm. hard tack, gross stuff. Um, also, uh, besides the the non weapon stuff, you guys already handled the weapon stuff. Um, given you, given you like uh, little flint and tinder boxes, so you can start a fire. Um, we've been trained how to do that, right? Lots of survival skills, just basic stuff. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Because you guys are okay. you got you've had wilderness courses and stuff like that. Um. Also, some like oil flasks, an oil flask each that you can use to like. Didn't give you torches, but you can kind of like make a torch with an oil flask and a stick and a, you know. And then you also have a week's rations each. You have a knapsack, basically like a like a canvas sack that you can throw stuff in. Um, you got the clothes you already got. Um, let's see what else. Rope. Well Oh yeah, we got some of this nylon cord stuff. I think, don't we? Well, yeah, I think yeah, a little bit. Yeah, he didn't have a lot of rope. No. He's got yeah. one. He's got one good length of rope, about a hundred feet. You can divvy it up how you want. You Let's got... keep it all together for now. I think. Yeah, like for six mile, six mile differences. I think we need to keep a three hundred foot rope for just small gaps. He also is like, Don't, <laughs> I never gave you anything. He he all he hands each of you a tiny little like worn leather satchel, a little pouch, local currency. Yeah, for currency, and there's a, there's a hundred. There's roughly about a hundred gold in each of those bags. Gold is the uh, the standard here. Um, that should last you. If anyone tells you that I cost a gold for a meal, run away. So there's smaller pieces. Yeah, they're just not in there. Um, there might be a few little ones in there, but you know, most things are priced at the copper. So you should be able to, you know, don't spend more than like you know ten copper on a decent meal or a silver. Mm -hmm. if it's a really good one. 
but uh, basically the exchange rate is uh you know 10 silver make a gold 10 copper make a silver you remember that you're good good well at least it's simple <laughs> what about in flesh 10 <laughs> say again uh, no, Scott said, good to count to 10. I just asked about inflation. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He has a weird look, look on his face as uh, he like he's kind of like holding something back. Spirits? And <laughs> he, he kind of remembers that as like one of the uh, staying hand approaches him and hands him like a a, a little, a tiny handheld chest. Mm. <laughs> He like says some word that you don't understand, like in a, like a clearly like a thank you kind of thing to them. And they nod kind of ceremoniously. So um there is one thing that I kind of wanted to get the good news out of the way for first before I laid it on you. And hey, maybe things are different now with the seraph. It's definitely not in my time. So you won't you're not gonna know for about another couple of weeks if this is true or not for you. Mm -hmm. Um so you know when you were inducted and you were given longevity to your life through the uh, through Ulta blood infusions. Yes, stop your aging. Well, yeah. not necessarily as permanent as they made it sound, which would be all well and good. Uh, if we wanted to die in a non-painful natural death, you know, and that was a good thing, but unfortunately as it wears off, you know, I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. It is the most awful death you can imagine. There are no Ulta on this world, at least not as we know them. There happens to be other species I guess you could call it maybe they're Ulta maybe not I have, don't have typically get around them that much the locals call them elves their blood has the same effect you may find out that you if you start feeling the pangs of withdrawal you might need an infusion he opens up this little chest he's like you see there's some little vials in there no, this is gonna last me for quite some time. But he kind of he gives each of you one of them. I can't give you more, or I'd be risking my own life. Because I don't know the next time I'll get a hold of some. You said infused. Uh, um, does this include a, a glass syringe or anything? Yeah, you're gonna just gonna have to. You break off the tip and you jab it in your arm. It's not very. Uh, Scientific. Mm. It's a suppository. Essentially. How long is this? <laughs> how long is this supposed to last? I don't know for you. I can't imagine that it's the exact same protocols, and you might not even need it. In which case, so let's say in a month or so, I can't go for more than two to three weeks. Mm. I don't know if it's the same for you guys. This will get you past right. that. Okay, so seek out elves for transfusion, make some elf friends. Or you might be able to work a deal. You might be able to work out a deal with you know some friends like these guys. They happen to be some type of medicine man. I don't know. Vampires. See Drain I help the them uh, I help the staying hand with their mission of protecting Celine. Another reason I can't go up there. Hmm. In or return, would... they I don't ask them where they get theirs from. Hmm. I wouldn't ask them either if I were you. All right. But maybe you can uh yeah, maybe they're open to another uh another set of agents that they can help each other out. Who knows? Or you know, there are these woods. This is the bad part of the woods right here. We're in the Dolewood. This thing called the Feywood. It's on the other side of the churn. 
much nicer. It's where the uh, the Elven capital is, Nishma Hill. Swarming yeah. with Lintaki by chance? No, Lintaki's on the other side of the ocean. You're safe from them. They wouldn't go near Nishma Hill. Those elves don't like most anybody. I was more worried about the expedition force we ran into, but yeah. Yeah, they're not going to go near that. They know better. They still got uh, the woods surrounded by chance? Or they think we're dead? Or I, I doubt it. There's only so dead. much of the woods they can surround. This woods is deep and gross and bad and evil. You probably don't realize how lucky you are that you survived this long in this part of the woods. No sane person traverses the dull wood. It's tainted. It's corrupted. Everything in here is mutated. Yeah. I look over to Hydra and Lucian, I say, but we didn't. But, we didn't survive. <laughs> yeah. Well, technically, you survived the woods. It wasn't that that got you. Uh-huh. True, true. He says something to the, uh, the, the, the staying hand person is in a language you don't understand, and they kind of nod and say something back. It's been explained that they will help guide you where you wish to go. There are places that are off limits to them, but they know that you are here to fulfill the prophetic mission. And what is that for them? They keep referring to some prophecy. Best to let them explain? What do you know? He kind of like turns to you so you can't, so they can't see his face. And he's like, I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Just go with it. Maybe we'll have a chance to kind of pick their brains a little bit once, once we get them alone. Oh. Careful about that. They're not as uh they're a little touchier than I am. Tactfully, right. maybe we'll pick up on some uh clues or some they'll drop some breadcrumbs. Yeah. They seem to like you okay, and you got my word, but like I wouldn't t- I wouldn't put that to the test too much. All um, right. Let them, let them lead this conversation. Yes. Also, no. You know what? You guys can talk to them and figure out where you want to go. I'll leave it at that. I think I, if I, I miss, I don't want to be the one that keeps giving you things that are going to throw you off. So, well, no. I guess we'll keep in touch as best we can. Hey, you know what? Not if, uh, <laughs> not, I'm, I hope not to hear from you because I mean things are going okay for you. So I hope not to hear from you. Fair enough. Not because I don't like you. I thought you said that you're going to wait to help us in case we didn't uh, go off and do some plans with uh, with the hand. Oh, no, no. Hmm. no I, I said you guys get in enough trouble, you know who to contact to get a hold of me. No, I've got a, uh, I've got places to be that don't creep me out as much as this. Yeah, well, maybe in the future you'll trust us enough to let us in on some of that information because safe houses aren't very safe if you don't make sure that they're safe. And if you're trying to retreat to one and it's been taken over by the enemy, then it's no longer useful. I don't keep this. I don't keep anything with the safe houses. Safe houses are all dead to me. I don't trust those. Uh, you're out there to help. Noted. Sometimes you might need one. I were, because Kaylin knows what the safe houses are. Keep that in mind. And the warlord knows what the, Kel- the, the safe houses are. Is it Kaylin across the sea? Yeah, and the warlord's not very far from here. Right over the northern ridge, all the mountains around this mountain northern ridge behind them are the barbarian tribes he was the one person that unified all those barbarian tribes oh one last thing do you have a map yeah you were downloading a map for us or yeah i can get you a map 
It's good. And that matrix printer fires up. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a. I've got a you can do some stick and poke on somebody's back. Yeah. And you hear some ancient AOL sounds starting up in the background. <laughs> I can throw a map in the chat and then um, you can just kind of reference it as you need it. And like everybody can take it, even though you only have one copy yeah. of it and like you're sharing yeah. it. And Alana, could we get that maybe up there too? Or would that be too much trouble? <laughs> maybe <laughs> next time. Maybe that will be yeah. next time. Um, I'll get that in a moment. You guys can keep going while I'm trying to get that for you. Um, so he's like kind of he if he kind of escorts you off the ship unless you want to stay there for any reason. Mm -hmm. I want to loot the ship. He seems ready to go though. <laughs> <We're probably laughs> <on panel. laughs> yeah, it sounds like we're not going to get much more out of him as much he's as I'd like to. Panel. Yeah. Say bye to our friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you get a, if you get a, uh, you know, if you get a uh, hankering for civilization, you want to see one of the great marvels uh, of this of this continent, which is not too terribly far from. You're only a couple hundred miles away from the largest city in the world. Oh, dangerous! Without oh, transportation, that's kind of uh, pointless information. No, it's Kings Road. You're in the civil. Once you get us out of these woods, you're in the civilized lands. Yeah, the West was conquered already. You're in the land of Wyeth. You get past, these, you get past the Dolwood back the way you came. You're on King's Lane. You take the King's Road in any direction, it's protected. But hundreds of miles away. Oh, King's Road itself is not hundreds of miles away. The, the city. Yeah, but you can take you can you can walk. I would send a child on the King's Road at night. Half the time is fine. Another half of the time is <laughs> that's fine. But it's fine. <laughs> this is scratch off a thousand years there. There you go. Trouble time. Yeah, well we're we're mm -hmm. we're traversing the earth as <laughs> mm -hmm. and nothing. Especially immortal. Why not, right? Yeah. He's yeah. We're gonna have a lot to talk about once this guy goes away. <laughs> but he's taking our friends with us, with him, right? What friends? Didn't he? Oh, he is. The, and, the monks, even. And, monks uh, are going. No, he's not taking Daniel and them with you. Oh, oh, yeah, was, I was mentioned them. And... No, I missed it. What were, you, what were you saying about them? I was trying to find out what you know. I I know that you know like they're not active, but I'm trying to find out. You know, are they going with him? Is he taking them somewhere? Are they going with the hand? Like uh, the staying hand offered to like care for them until they're recovered. And then that can, makes sense. And then here on, them here after... on site at the space level or, or something. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. So, so their blood yeah. is used for an infusion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Once we all well, get their blood, the... would, their blood wouldn't do the trick because if that was the case, then your guys would blood would do the trick. Mm -hmm. Right now, uh, we don't know people's motives. What can I find? Yeah. These, these, this, this strangely named race of creatures allegedly has the blood of ultras in it. Yeah, the, the Ulta. Oh, boy. Let's go find the Ulta, everyone. 10,000 parts later. <laughs> Let's go drink some Ultras. <laughs> yeah. Why can't I find this damn thing? Well, it's not important right now. You might want yeah. to add it to our player packet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I was just going to say, we, uh, all, the whole group's got a lot to talk about once we get out of the, get away from anybody else. Like, okay, what are we going to do with the rest of our lives? Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling whatever we, whatever comes next with the hand will probably kind of Get, probably uh, lead us down a path. I, I agree. They're probably we're going to be with them for a little You're bit. Not flying away from here right now. No, definitely I guess I'm, at this point I'm still sort of getting my bearings, and I I, I feel like uh, I mean I'm a bit of an opportunist, so uh, I'm so as happy here as, <laughs> as happy here as anywhere else. If there's you know, 
you know, a life to be yeah. made. I, I think we at least need to stick together at the start when we don't yeah. really have much. Exactly. Much we could, uh, yeah, Dash is like, oh, I'm already over them. You know. No, <laughs> I, I mean, it's I a, a, a uh, convenience last so step far. Prison. So he only gives you a partial map, which is of the of the of the the twin continents you're on right now. You're in the mm-hmm. western the western world, which is like basically like a North America, South America kind of land bridge connected thing. I'll throw it in the chat. Okay. So it's only half of it, but um mm-hmm. What is this place known as you, you Washington DC? Uh, yeah. I don't use my computer. During when I'm not gaming. Oh, <laughs> thanks a lot. This and let me do this. Might take us out. No, I get to send mm. automatic. Yeah, I don't. I don't know about you all, but uh, I've got so many ideas rushing in my head right now. <laughs> We're trying to figure out what. Oh man. Slowly going through. It's, it's like all it. open. Yeah. Come on, baby. Men are oh, all internal oh, dialogue RP things. You know? like, okay. Should have been. Uh, Should have gone through. Yep, it, it, I think it did. That should be the. Is say L on the end of the file, like left side of the map. L, yeah, thirteen B. So, um, you yeah, are. I think so. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, yours. You're, it's very easy to pick out where you are on this map. By the way, if you open it up, it's the one that it says Mount Selena. It has a big cloud around it. It's right in the mm-hmm. center, the, the top quarter center of the map. I see, the top, yeah, the top of the middle. Cut. It's a really, really nice map. map too. Holy crap! <laughs> I hate it myself. I better not crash my computer. In Wonder Draft, um, mm-hmm. Yeah, he he points out awesome. that on that map, the city he mentioned is Engleport. It's the uh, on the far left. Engleport. Uh, okay. Those. Oh, uh, I see. see the king. You can see the King's Road is the the um, the dotted uh, orangey yellow lines. Mm-hmm. If you zoom gotcha. in, you kind of see those. He does mention. And we crossed them. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. You're not sure. I mean, the map is not perfectly to scale. So you're not, you, you landed somewhere kind of in the churn, the way it's listed on this map, though it wasn't like quite, or in the Dullwood, but not quite. You didn't go through the entire Dullwood. You probably like okay. landed right between the the and the D of Dullwood. I Maybe see. a little bit even more. I was going to say the churn is a lot bigger than I thought it was. Yeah, I know. It's not quite that big. It's, again, these are like old school maps where they're not meant to be perfectly to scale. Oh, that's true. Ignore yeah, the yeah. Uh, fact that it has a hex grid on it. That doesn't make it kind of like belies that a little bit. The gaminess, yeah. We'll see about uh we'll see about getting that out there for the for the audience in the in, in the coming up episode. But uh yeah. Um mm-hmm. yeah, so he kind of mentions also that some of those places like Tulland and Urz, Aranol, uh, and Simber, those are some of the barbarian tribes uh, that are kind of unified mm-hmm. under this uh, warlord who used to be their nerdy engineer who has transformed himself into like a Lord Humongous type. If you... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it seems like the closest big city is Narfel, right? Is what? Narfel is the closest kind of biggish city. Yeah, and then if we if, went south. If you're talking about this in any out loud, he's like, "What? Well, that's, that's a military outpost." Yeah. All right. Sorry, we. Uh, wait, is 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 Rocky? Is he back? I don't see him. No, Rocky's still gone. <laughs> oh, oh! I thought we were. Wait, I thought we were. I thought he came back, and that's when we went back live. Did no. You get an email. What do you think? Uh, when Rocky comes back, we'll go to a BRB, get him back in, and then go gotcha. back. And maybe too, it even gotcha. makes sense. Uh, okay. I'm losing my voice a little bit. Maybe we can uh, once we get you guys. Once we once this ship goes by, right, breaking point. 
That'd be good. It gives us time to also make an actual. Yeah. Do a full oh. level up in between sessions. So it'd be good. So you still wouldn't have the uh, information you need to make a make. Oh, well, I guess you could. We could kind of cheat it a little bit, but um, basically, just so you know, if uh, there are two ways, uh, there's like several ways you could get the necessary information to like conform to a uh, a benison or a class. One way was, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't mind telling you this. I don't think it's a big spoiler. One way is entering, you know, getting to civilization and blending in, embedding yourself. Another way would be getting to the, mm -hmm. the main database. Because um, actually, I need to give you a piece of hidden information there, uh, James. I need, I need to send you a... Uh, oh. oh, yeah. Wizzles or whatever it is. Let me, let me go ahead and do this. So... Uh, Everything's fine, Scott. <laughs> Earmuffs. Mm. I mean, we both got some nice looking earmuffs, right? Yeah. <laughs> or Rocky. Lost him. I was just checking for an email from Rocky, but we haven't gotten one yet. Could be a cool router failure for all we know. So it's actually kind of surprised how unstable my internet's being. Not really sure. So tell me if you tell me if you got that and if it makes sense. I just got what I needed. Yeah, that, hopefully that makes sense to some degree. Mm. Yeah. Marcus just kind of stops for a moment for like two seconds as if he was in place, as if he heard something and then just carries on like normal. Something brushed by my leg. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, something brushed his leg. I think da Dash keeps a pretty good eye on everybody, but kind of keeps to himself it. otherwise. We're going to take a quick BRB. Rocky is back. Okay, sweet. Well, we we fixed it. The Lentaki blocked our, uh, jammed our signal. <laughs> out, so uh, we, we took care of them. Um, <laughs> they've been taken care of since. So no more, uh, no more uh, locals trying to steal our technology, our Zoom technology. Um <laughs> oh, so, thank you, Great uh, Babe, for the wishes. Oh, sweet. What? what, what? Well, somebody just wished us a good show. Oh, um, thanks. They were babe. leaving, so yeah. Um, let uh, yeah. So, does anything? Anybody want any final words or anything with uh, old uh, uh, Agata here, or is he good to go on his way? Yeah. I could pick a goddess brain for like a week and I'd probably not be done. So <laughs> probably guess best to just let it go. I, I thought that uh, you know that I thought that was the original deal. He's like, Oh, you know, I could feed you for a couple of weeks and you know, like, you know, I thought we were gonna like he was gonna be like our if we didn't go off with the hand that like that he was gonna be like our home base for a minute. Uh -huh. Is that implied? <laughs> well, I mean that immediately changed as soon as like he opened the door. <laughs> yeah. Time for you to go. Yeah, I think he yeah. just kind of wants, he feels an obligation to just say, okay, yeah, here, this is what the deal is. Okay, bye. I don't care. For a <laughs> little crash course. <laughs> yeah. Professional courtesy. Uh, yeah. I'll give you the hour intro. And, yeah. the old <laughs> Wilderness yeah. scouts just drop us off in the middle of the forest. Yeah. Yeah, I think for, for I think from him it's like the less we know the better it seems to him. Oh, aside from it makes us look less conspicuous. Excuse me, conspicuous. He also seemed but to I, kind of like that he gave you the big the main points, and actually you have the opportunity to find out more than he even knows because he's purposely kind of yeah. kept his face out of stuff because he doesn't want to be involved. 
he's right. he, kind of, he seems to be using this world as a second chance and kind of imply mm-hmm. that he wanted he was kind of drafted to do the job he didn't want to do so that yeah. sounds familiar <laughs> yeah it's like hey the imperium can't find me here can't be forced to be mm-hmm. you know a lackey to the ulta so mm-hmm. unless there are ulta here living in different guises mm-hmm. like Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, for all the crazy crap we've seen so far, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. He's like, "Well, you know how to get a hold of me. You can talk to these guys here." Um, he, uh, uh, let me see. There we go. Burr, burr, burr. Dang it! Oof. My uh. Headache. It's hard to see. He he um he's like I leave you in the hands of uh, this very very affable young man, and he kind of laughingly points at this uh, one very old member of the staying hand. This is Kurita. Kurita is the administrator or the rector for the city. Yeah, it's like Korita's your guy. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know mm-hmm. he'll take care of you, take care of him. He nods okay. and I hope I'll have to use those ampules oh. like I'll check back with you at some point in the future and uh you'll have to let me know if uh if they cursed you as well as I've been cursed. Good old Seraph. Hopefully that's an outdated note. You guys will live long and happy lives without mm-hmm. having to worry about becoming drug addicts. But mm-hmm. in any case, I bid you a deal. Oh, yeah. Happy hunting. Let, yes. me, mm-hmm. let me know what you find up in that computer if you ever go up there. Actually, you know what? I take it back. I don't want to know. <laughs> well, Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for that smart ass little robot off this ship. Robots, <laughs> smart ass, smart bud. He um, he fires up the engines as you guys get off, um, and very deftly, it kind of like you you your your tendency is to look after somebody taking off, and it like gives you vertigo for a moment because you forget that you're on your you're you're uh, ninety degrees to the rest of the outside world right now. Mm-hmm. So yeah, um, so it's like just enough to like whoa, but you don't fall off of the world. So definitely, you're clinging to the ground as if it were normal gravity. Mm-hmm. But you are definitely uh, literally at a ninety degree angle from the. Or something approximating a ninety degree angle, following the curve of the uh, of the of the deck. You also, some of y'all know what artificial gravity feels like because in the Imperium, uh, whenever you're accelerating towards uh, the jump gate, which is you have to get close to light speed to be able to use a jump gate, like these, like basically like the hyperspace tunnels. No ship has like a hyperspace drive. It just you get really close to light speed, and then you use you have to like jam it into one of those tunnels when you're approaching like you know nine tenths of light speed. Um, but while you're accelerating in one straight line, you have artificial gravity. This is generated from the reaction. Um, but whenever you're in system maneuvering, just using maneuver drives, you have no gravity in your ships. But you do know what that artificial grip you've all been on a on an acceleration course for a jump drive, so you know what that you can feel it like in your legs and stuff. So you know what that artificial gravity feeling feels like. This doesn't feel like that. All right. But you are in a legendary fabled colony seed ship now. So anyway, and also um 
you can see now that you're out of the ship that um this is a sealed in chamber this this uh, uh landing area this uh docking bay but there is a huge like a lot of the walls are made out of stone and there's mm-hmm. a huge piece that was ripped out of the far up op- the wall opposite the entrance uh like he like something like sundered a huge piece of it like almost like it collapsed um like a giant v v-shaped missing piece and you can see into a grand uh you can't even call it a chamber beyond it was like a grand expanse beyond mm. and it and you can from what little light that kind of permeates because this place the lights are all dark in this place uh for the most part well, a little light kind of permeates in various little pockets. Uh, it looks like the it. It's almost like an interior world, you know. It's like it goes, it goes up and down, and then it's like it goes. You know, it's like you can. It's almost like a hard to explain, but like a uh, completely self-contained. Yeah, you know, I guess it would be like a Dyson sphere, almost, or something like that, but not a sphere, obviously, or a uh, you know. A um, uh, what do they call it? What's that other term for uh, uh there's a uh, guys, uh, something uh, O'Neill cylinder where it's like an entirely you know, like, like a uh, you know, a, a, an old proposed like notion of how to have a civilization in space where it's like an entirely self contained like city or grand you know, settlement. That's bigger than like you could fly some of your the largest starships you've ever seen could be flown inside of here. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's also weird because you don't see much activity. You know, it's like this place looks like it should be like bustling, like even through that crack, but it just looks dead. Mm-hmm. Um mostly Karida kind of comes up to you and he said, he said, Are you s- Standing okay, you're fine with your gravity. Is mm-hmm. well, well, we'll take this over. Calls. We'll take this over falling. <laughs> I was told to extend to you our greatest courtesies, and Amanya and Pavia back that up. He kind of like notions of the two girls that you were with before the two uh, female monks. And they like kind of nod at you like the closest thing that you're going to get to affection from them. You were foretold. Our prophecies don't go much beyond your visit. This is one visit we've been waiting for a long time. The prophecy goes somewhat dark after this. Which leads me to believe that your visit will be fateful. So what can we, the staying hand, do to help you at this point? Hmm. Do you seek to fulfill your do you seek to fulfill your ascent? I think we need to speak with each other about this. There's much to take in. Yes, you must be uh, famished as well. We shall take you to our... (laughs) Who would like to go, we can take you to our uh, monastery. It's inside here. We are very close by. Mm. Feed you. And get you rest. Can I get some clean robes there? We do not have robes that can be given to non members. I just meant clothing. The robot, little, uh, what's your robot's name again? Laszlo. Laszlo's like, didn't you? He said, don't talk about the robes. The robes. Why is this guy tied up the robes? Yes, I didn't mention anything about their robes. Yeah, but don't use the R word. I like robes. We can find 
something for you. I preferred dress. <laughs> but it is not necessarily a bad thing for you to heed the gifts of uh, your good captain. Those clothes that were given to you that you hold now, they are accurate. They would draw little attention. We are the only ones that must know that you are of your origins, that you are from the heavens. Hmm. Well, it, it seems our those men protect this. Seems but, those. Sorry. No, go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say, well, it seems those Len talk, you know. So. They are a pox that will be dealt with. Well, if they know, then unfortunately, many others might know. They are here to finish the job they tried to complete 2,000 years ago. They will not have it. There's a reason why my order is here in Selene is to protect it from those who would. Bring her down. We are its mission protectiva. We are here to make sure it stands even against the blood mages in the Sanguine Order. Those that became the Lentaki, those who tried to destroy not only this home of the gods, but our very world. That is our job. Our That is our cross to bear. We only ask that you tread carefully amongst those who do not appreciate or know of your origin. In that, in that manner, you may help us. Mm -hmm. Very well. It is my obligation. Hmm. One more time. <laughs> I said, of course, Roy, let us go. Yeah. So let's travel. Let's I'll wear these stinky clothes. I don't need no ropes. He kind of guides you down the, the path uh, back to uh, through what looks like a uh, you know, at the, at the end of this uh, end of this kind of like landing bay uh through what looks like what it would have been a sliding door at one point or a uh, telescoping door at one point or iris that's just been jammed open. It's just a circular hole now. Um, as he's walking, he kind of just throws in uh, out of obligation. He says, it is my obligation to tell you not that I expect this and I don't want you to take it the wrong way. But it, if you were to do anything, against the order or the way or what we've deemed to be our mission protectiva, you would be declaring yourselves enemies and devils, not angels. I'm sure once we eat, you can sit down and educate us about the way so that we don't end up doing that right, without it being by choice. You know the way. It's very simple. You don't tell anyone of your origin. You don't exploit your origin. You don't lord your heavenly gifts over the rest of us or the any of the people here, and you don't try to profit from it. Doing so would make you no better than the Lentaki. But I know that this is not your path. I have read the signs. Mm, seems that we'll get along well then. It is my life that is on the line for this. I staked your your safety was staked under the the word of my life, the bond of my life. You are seeing something that no mortals get to see. Normally, anyone who traversed or trespassed onto the interior somehow if there was even a chance of them getting into the interior of Celine, they would be long dead 
most can't even get is within the, the closeness of the bridge. Hmm. So you've already seen sights that are far beyond that of the normal person. As befitting your imperial, your Empyrean status. Um, so he so now you kind of like go from this giant like hall uh, into this like much more cramped tunnel, um, which you can see is like a weird mixture of uh, stonish walls, but with occasional kind of like places where the stone gives way to like defunct dead uh, electronic paneling. Mm-hmm. Um. But no life seems to run through this. Uh, in fact, he's kind of he's now holding a torch. Uh, and then the and then the ones behind you kind of taking up the rear, including uh Pavia and Amania, also have torches. There's enough light that you guys don't need to de- deal with torches. And uh eventually leads you into another chamber that you can't tell what its original purpose was. Possibly it's a Looks like it might have been a um, uh, cargo bay, potentially. Mm. But it's hard to tell. It's been so modified. And there is a very ornate, like, monast- stone monastery. Just, like, somehow carved out of the rock, but also kind of jutted into the middle of this room. It's almost like a giant block of stone was part of the cargo, and it got turned into this somehow. But it's, you know, it's two stories tall, and it's... It's significant. Um, and you see, and so far you've only seen these staying hand guys having like staves as their weapons. Very kind of like, you know, Kung Fu Legend Continues kind of style. Uh, not a lot of, uh, not a lot of breaking stereotypes there. But um, yeah, uh, there's, you can see some uh, positioned like guards kind of along various you know, outcroppings on the structure um, as he leads you into the complex and uh, takes you to get food and all that fun stuff. Um, you guys are going to want to decide what you want to do next, and I'm losing my voice, so probably a good time to uh, settle our affairs, right? What do you think? Yeah, I agree. Sure. I feel like we're you're very close to some other major encounters. So if you wanted to, the, any direction you go would be doing it some something big. So I don't want to uh, <laughs> still break off that break off that kit cat right now. So, but um, yeah, while I still have my few remaining voice moments, I will thank everyone who's still here that can still stand the sound of my ter- terrible gravel <laughs> voice and. Um, yeah, we'll be back in, uh, you know, the, the standard two weeks. And, uh, you know, let's see what happens. Um, anybody else want to say any parting words for our uh, live studio audience? Be well. Be healthy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thanks for having me. For tomorrow. You yes, thank I, you for joining us. I yeah. think. We hope you had fun. Yeah. I'm going to come back and do it all over again sometime. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Lana, are you still there? All right. Well, we'll be back in two weeks, guys. All right. Stay safe, everyone. Bye. See you later, gang. Mm-hmm.